Hello, so I am going to be doing um, my medication administration video. Um, so when I first start my medication administration, I always want to make sure that I am doing my hand hygiene. Let me get my hand hygiene. So I'm performing my hand hygiene. And then whenever you're doing administration of drugs, you always want to make sure that um, you're always verifying the provider's orders with the medic, uh, the medication records of the patient. Um, make sure that they're equal and they're right and that there's no differences between the medication of the orders and the medication that was on the medication record for the patient. So you want to make sure all that um, is in place for your patient and make sure that that has no differences and that um, you're all in check. So then you also want to make sure that you're providing to see if their patient has any allergies to any medication or if they have any um, different types of like a contradiction that go along with the medication. So you don't want any problems or any uh, side effects or adverse effects or anything that goes along with the medication and create difficult or bad things for the patient. So you want to make sure that it's all in check with the medical administration record and that it's all go with no differences between the patient and the orders and what it's supposed to be getting. Um, so as you always do, you always want to make sure that you know the patient, you have them verify the name and date of birth so you can verify their orders and the name and then verify it with the, medica uh, the medication administration record. I can't say it, the MAR, the MAR, I'm going to say the MAR, um, to make sure that it's verified in order and that it's the right patient. Um, so this is the part that you would also identify the first medication label check. So when you do the medication label check, you want to make sure that um, it corresponds to the MAR. And then you also want to make sure that it's the right drug, the right dose, the right route. And you also want to make sure that you're administrating at the right time because these checks are very important on making sure that you're not having any medical errors when administrating the drug to the patient or any adverse side effects. And then as normal, you want also, if you have to, you want to make sure that you are calculating the patient's drugs correctly because you do not want to misuse or miss give them a drug. Say that someone put down 0.5 grams, someone might interpret that as 5 grams, and that is a huge difference and it could kill your patient. So you want to make sure that you're doing the right um, medication calculations and make sure that you're writing it correctly so there are no medical errors while doing it. You also want to have a second opinion. So you want to make sure that you're asking another nurse to check it for you so you're not the only one in case you miss something. So that is always good. So whenever you are getting your prescribed route of the MAR, you want to always make sure that you are recapping the needle with one swoop motion so there's no cross-contamination or any like needle pokes or sticks on you. And then after doing that, you want to make sure that you do the check again. So you want to make sure that you're doing the label check again. So you want to make sure that it's the right drug, the right dose, the right route and right time. And it's all contributing and it's all comparing to the MAR while you're doing that as well. So you want to make sure you're comparing the label to the MAR to make sure it's correct. Um, and then you do not open the medications yet. So then you will provide privacy for your patient as always and make them feel comfortable with the procedure of what you're doing. You will also provide hand hygiene before you don any type of gloves. Um, before, whenever I made sure I had the right uh, prescription, I asked the patient for two identifiers, name, date of birth, to see, make sure that it um, goes along with the MAR of what I am giving them. Um, you want to also make sure that the patient has no drug allergies. Once again, make sure they're not allergic to anything or allergic to the drug that they're getting so there's no adverse effects of what you're doing. So you would want to inform the patient the rationale of why you were giving this drug like you would give the rationale for any other procedure that you're doing. So it might be for a medication that they need. It might be like insulin. It might be any sort of that. And if it's, hell, if it's an IM, uh, intramuscular, subcutaneous, transdermal, like anything like that, you want to make sure that you're telling them the rationale for why you're receiving it and tell them and teach them and give patient education of any adverse effects or any indications or any precautions or contraindications of what could happen if they do something different with this medication that they're not supposed to be doing. Um, and for any procedure, you always want to make sure you ask questions and you'll answer them and that you always get a verbal consent before proceeding with your procedure. Okay, so you want to make sure that you perform um, 
vital signs always before you do a procedure with a patient to make sure you have a baseline of what their vital signs are before and then if you need to do the vital signs after you can tell a difference or what they have and you have a baseline for what they're doing you also want to make sure that no matter what kind of administration drug you want to make sure that they have a gag flea effect so that you um, observe the swallowing because if it's PO by mouth you want to make sure that they can swallow it and they don't have any um, problems with that as well and then after you make sure you identify all that with your patient that they don't have any allergies that they can swallow with their vital checks you want to do the medication check again so you want to make sure that it is the right drug right dose right route right time and make sure it's all the same again that it corresponds with the Mars as well once again to make sure you do your three checks of why you're doing it okay so now you want to make sure that you are inspecting inspecting this site of where you're going to be injecting it. Um, you want to make sure that there are no cuts, bruises, lesions, redness, irritation, um, inflammation, anything like that. You also want to make sure that you're not doing it on a bony prominence because if you are inserting on a bony prominence, it will hurt your patient and you will not be able to go in the right angle, the right depth of what you need to do for the certain uh, injection that you are doing. Um, and then for our injection that we're doing is going to be subcutaneous. So subcutaneous, it's a 25 gauge needle. Um, it's a five inch or eight inch long needle. And then you either go at a 45 or a 90 degree angle, depending on how big your patient is or what, um, you are supposed to be doing. And then we want to make sure that we are one inch away from the umbilicus, umbilicus of our tummy. Okay, so before any injection, you always want to make sure that you're cleaning the injection site. So act like this is an alcohol swab. I am cleaning the injection site. I can't speak. Injection site with um, a wipe, an antimicrobial wipe. Make sure you always want to do it in a circular motion from center working outward about uh, two to three inches or so. Okay, so now I want to make sure I put my gloves on. Clean gloves. Okay, so I cleaned it in the circular motion of it. Um, and I'm going to gently grasp my subcutaneous tissue. I can't really grasp this, but you would pinch it where it would like raise up kind of like this. So like it would raise up on your arm like that. So you would gently grasp it with your non-dominant hand. And with your um, dominant hand, you'll have the needle. So you always want to make sure that you're informing the patient of what you're doing. So you're ready. Um, Verbal extent before you do it. Okay, so I gently grasp it, and I am going to inform the patient that, yes, I'm going to start to do the needle stick. So I'm going to insert at an angle of 45 or 90 degree angle, depending on how much skin or how much subcutaneous tissue my patient has. So my patient is a skinnier one, so I'm going to be going at a more at like a 45, no, 90-ish. I'll just say 90. We'll go in a 90 degree angle. So then I will insert it into the 90 degree angle, and then I will release my grasp of my subcutaneous tissue, but I'm still making sure I'm stabilizing around the skin. And then I am slowly going to insert my medication through my syringe that I have injected the needle at right here. So pretend this is a needle. I slowly insert it, whatever, like that. And then I will remove my stabilizing hand while I am withdrawing the needle at the same angle that I have inserted, because if you insert remove it at a different angle, it can cause tissue damage and it can hurt the patient as well. So then while the injection site, it might bleed. So we are gonna put some cotton ball or gauze on it to make sure we are stopping the bleeding um, when we are doing that and we're stabilizing that um, spot. And then we are going to put our needle into the sharps bucket and we wanna make sure that we are recapping it or no, don't recap it. We are removing it and we're putting it into a needle thing, but we don't recap it. You never recap a needle, but when you put it in. So you throw it in the sharps, make sure it's safely in the container. Um, and then I will inspect my injection site, injection site, injection, injection site, jeez, for any redness, irritation, um, bleeding, or any type of like uh, allergic reaction that occurred with my injection. Um, and then if there's not, I will take away the cotton ball and then I will put a band-aid, a band-aid, like right there, a band-aid over my <laughs> insertion site. 
And then I'll put my clothing on my patient back over or wherever it was that I had to poo do my uh, <laughs> injection site. I can't speak. Injection, injection site. Okay, so then I will remove my gloves, make sure my gloves and stuff are all removed in the proper bin. I will always perform hand hygiene before and after any procedure that I'm doing. I will um, elevate the patient's bed if it's in the hospital setting to at least 30 degrees uh, angle. And then I will... Hold on, my patient. Okay, and then if my patient is uh, getting oral medication, I will make sure that I put it in the proper container that it is in, um, whether it has to be in a cup, a spoon with eating it for food or whatever forth, but I wanna sit there and watch them while they eat it if it is PO. Um, and you wanna also administer, when you're administering the drug to the patient, you wanna tell them what it is and then verbalize what it is because they can refuse to take the medication as well. Um, and then I want you wanna make sure that you're watching the patient take it and swallow it and checking under their tongue and mouth and make sure that they take the medication, that they don't just put it in their mouth and spit it out. You wanna make sure you're in the room while they're taking the medication and that they actually swallowed it. Um, and then after that, I will assess the patient again, asking for any pain or so forth or any discomfort. Um, <clears throat> I will also perform hand hygiene after doing that. Um, then I want to make sure the bed is in the lowest position. The bed is locked. Call, rise, call light is in reach. Hand reels are up. Um, ask them if they need anything else. Um, assess them once again. Say thank you for let, cooperating with this procedure. Always hand hygiene. You never can go wrong with hand hygiene. And then you'll say thank you. And then that will be the end of your medication administration.